I'm going to talk, I'm Marty, this is my son Matthew, this is my other boy Brian, he hasn't been in many of our videos face to face because he's always the guy that's doing the videos and editing and doing the, the stuff, but today I want to talk a little bit about the history of what we have done, and this is where the plane that it all started with for me, my parents got me this, I don't know, some 30 years ago, and I built this uh, cadet senior, and it's been handed down to each one of my boys. In fact, my oldest son, Brian, he flew this when he was five years old. Uh, Matthew, this is the plane that he learned on. In fact, at one point, Matthew said, I'm never going to have anything but a big top wing. And now everything he has is a low wing screaming. Uh, but this, this plane means a lot to both the boys. I have talked over the years about retiring it or getting rid of it. Neither one of them want to see it go anywhere. But we fly in a, in a rural area. I have got uh, a 20 acre plot that's got a little landing strip at the back of it. That's where the boys and I fly. And with the current legislation that's in place, uh, we wouldn't have had all the experience, good experiences and, and good learning things that we've had over the years had it not been for just going out back and flying. And, and I'm gonna let Brian tell you a little bit about his experiences and what he thinks. Uh, first thing I wanna start with is uh you know you started this however long ago by building this and it was something that your parents got you that means a lot to you and you pass it on to both of us and something that's what the hobby's about in all reality it's you know it's about uh sharing memories i mean think about the time of matthew with his with the orange radio oh yeah <laughs> you know i mean we've got thousands of stories of tears from laughter and and from failure uh there's been so many times uh, that we've just been in this building working, or actually where we used to work even, and just the stuff that's said on a windy day or a rainy day when we're building or something like that. And something I want to say is it doesn't, to me, matter necessarily what you're building as long as you're not just sitting there on your phone or, or uh, watching TV or playing an Xbox or something like that. Whether you're going to pick up something and, you know, scratch build even uh, one of Bixler's planes or... Uh, any plan online, something simple even, uh, whether it's electric or gas or glow, it, you know, as long as you're getting involved with it, uh, there's countless jobs that could be affected by this. I've got some uh, companies listed here like Ohio Superstars. You guys have been talking about them quite a bit in your scimitar series. They make a lot of hardware and stuff, and they're right from here in Ohio. Right. Uh, the other one, Aerotech Hobbies. Uh, those guys, we go up there probably every weekend. You know, we've built relationships with Roy and Jason, and, you know, we like going up there. And the diehards probably won't quit doing it. We won't quit doing it. Like you said, we, we built a building just specifically for this hobby. But what will happen is prices will go up. It's going to become much more expensive for anybody to do it with, whether it's a telecom deal or, you know, whether it's even a remote ID, there's going to be less and less people doing it. So prices will go up and a lot of these small brick and mortar places will go out of business. So it's very important. The comment period actually for this goes on until March 2nd, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So anybody can go and they can make a comment about this uh, proposed legislation. And something very important also is not to get emotional and not to uh, basically say that you're not going to comply because that's the exact opposite of what we want. Um, something, you know, something needs to be done. Uh, somebody can go to Best Buy and, you know, pick up a drone and fly it in, into their neighbor's house if they want to. Um, something needs to be done with that. But something like this doesn't need to be addressed. How long have you been doing it? 30, over 35 years. And have you ever flown in anybody's house? Never. Or, or, we've always complied with all the AMA guidelines. Yeah. And we're back on our section flying. If there's a full scale, even anywhere as close to us, we never fly alone. Somebody's always going, hey, there's a full scale up there. We come down, land, or if it's you know something that's way up there, we're down, you know, 400 foot or less. And a couple years ago, we had the hot air balloon. And we came in, and, and the hot air balloon people waved to us. You know, it's funny, real quick, you mentioned Josh Bixler with flight tests. There was at one point in time, Josh Bixler used to come back and fly with us at our field. Uh, we enjoyed having him there. He always had something unusual. At that time, his ties were pretty close to Hobby King. He was yeah. doing a lot of things with Hobby King. And, but we used to fly with Josh. We, the relationships that we've built, uh, Matthew talking to Chuck Cunningham. Bill Evans. Bill Evans. Um, Bruce Tharp. Bruce Tharp. Uh, Clarence Lee from uh, K&B. K &B. 
It's just you know, the relationships that we've built worldwide and, and, uh, across the United States and just it's the priceless. networking, the, networking uh, the things that you learn. I mean, it's more than just, you know, slapping some wood together or, or, you know, laying a bead of hot glue down and folding something over. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not just you build it and you fly it. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. Um, Matthew with his Simistar, there's going to be a video coming up about that thing. And what he did with that is what the hobby was meant to be. Yep. It has taken something from nothing. I mean, it was just, you know, pieces of wood. And he turned it into uh, a true one-of-a-kind airplane that flies phenomenal. Uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, the networking and getting to know people, getting to know the hobby. And we just really want to make sure that it sticks around for a long time. Again, that um, comment period is over March 2nd. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, I can't really think right now of anything else to say about it. Matthew, do you have anything that you, you want to share? Add? You want to share a story? Uh, or? Uh, back when uh, Josh Bethler used to fly with us back there, this is the plane I was flying. Mm -hmm. I I was flying this. I was way up, way up, and he was flying uh, some little uh, foam. I forget what it was, but he was laughing. His kids were there. They were oh. all laughing. It, I I flew this thing for. A good year, and I, I still like to go back to it and just like taking off and landing. It's also an amazing airplane. It was designed by Claude McCullough. And again, another thing, just real quick, I seen a, an article somebody the other day on online was asking how long does a glow engine last? And one guy said, "Oh, they're good for about three gallons of fuel." This is the original Super Tiger G forty forty nine for uh, yeah the it was a forty nine bushed in the front, bearing in the rear. The engine has lasted 30 years. It's never been out. It's never been apart. And it looks like it. But I can go fire this up. It'll start right up and I'll go fly. It's lasted forever. And again, these are the original Dave Brown Ohio Superstar wheels. Uh, I think at that time, Ohio Superstars, I don't think he owned it. But they were still Dave Brown wheels. Those were all original. And it's a testimony of how long their stuff lasts. I mean, unfortunately, you don't get to see a lot of the, the cool and crazy stuff that we get into because we like flying so much. So a lot of times, we, unless it's, you know, kind of crappy out, we don't have the camera going and doing stuff like this. But, I mean, these guys have had sleds with uh, scooter wheels on them to take planes off with. We were dropping G.I. Joe's with this plane. Woody. Woody. Yeah, it was a, a Woody doll Matthew had. We would strap it on the top of it. We'd get up in the air and we'd roll the plane over and he would fall off with a parachute on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we've had a lot of fun over the years and, and we could sit here and tell stories all day long. Yep, and I'm sure that the rest of you guys could too. That's why it's very important to get a comment out. Uh, maybe even reach out to your uh, local representatives. Uh, I know here in Ohio, Sherrod Brown would be a good guy to get a hold of. But uh, as far as all that stuff goes, we want to keep it around and we want to make sure that it uh, continues to have a good name. So, there, is there anything else that you guys want to add to this? Good. All right, should be good. Uh, please don't be afraid to like and subscribe and definitely get that comment to the FAA. And I'm going to, again, leave that link in the description below and make sure that you guys leave a comment by March 2nd. Thanks a lot.